In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this 80s synthwave vaporwave style logo scene here. And it will be done in such a way that you can even at the end go through and change your text to whatever you like, like this. This means that you can even sell it as a template on websites like Graphic River. Look at this person. He's done something similar and managed to sell it for $12 3,100 times, earning him 37,200 pounds, which is insane. Well, dollars, but same as pounds now because of Brexit. I will also be doing this same tutorial as a challenge video using nothing but a mobile phone and software called Photop. For a link to this video, check out the description below. First of all, you'll need to download the images from the link in the description below, including the fonts there. Obviously, to install a font, you just find it in your downloads folder, double click on it, hit install, and it's done. Once Photoshop's open, do File New and make a document that is 1920 pixels by 10. 80 pixels. You could of course go bigger if you want, but some of my students have quite low quality devices. So we're going to stick with that and I'm going to create on there. Now these sorts of images usually have a skyline of mountains or a city in the distance. So we're going to try and emulate that. Let's bring in our first image of the mountains. Drag the mountains in like this and you'll see that the image isn't quite the right size for 1920 by 1080, but that's good. Let's first of all move the mountains down. So so I'm just going to use the move tool here and move the mountains down to there. If there's a tick at the top of your screen, click the tick or hit enter on the keyboard to commit to that change. I'm using the keyboard arrows here just to modify the position of that. Now we're going to need to remove the sky from these mountains to put what we want in there. To do that, we'll need to rasterize the layer. Right click in your mountains layer over here and do rasterize layer. Now in the 2021 version of Photoshop, there is something called sky removal tool in here where you can change and remove the sky. But uh, for now, we're going to keep things simple. Now, while I would usually use select color range to remove colors from the sky, you can see here that it's picking up quite a lot of the colors of the mountains, even if I keep the fuzziness down quite low. And that might cause an issue later on. So I'm going to not do that. And instead, I'm going to use the old fashioned quick selection tool. To do that, hit W on the keyboard and click and hold on it and change it down to the quick selection tool. Click and drag over near the top of the picture of the sky here and it will do a fairly good job. There's a few areas though where it's done it wrong. So to fix that you need to hold alt on the keyboard. Notice when you hold alt that at the top of your screen the minus for, uh, mode is enabled and you can then take away from the selection. So if you zoom in with alt and scroll, you can kind of click and drag over the mountain like this and it will then remove from the selection. So I'm holding down alt constantly while clicking on the different parts of the mountain that I'd rather it not remove. If you accidentally click too far into the sky like I've done here, then you can simply let go of alt, click back into it and it will get reselected again. And holding spacebar and dragging around my screen here. Don't worry if the edge isn't exact. It's better to have the edge on the inside of the mountains rather than the outside. Because when we delete it, no one's really going to know that it's gone anyway. So don't worry about any bits like this that you've left out. And you can see when you refine it like this by holding Alt, it does do a much better job. And when you've scanned along the top and made sure everything's the way you want it, then you're ready to delete. Now, this is a beginner's level tutorial. I'll be using destructive editing techniques in this. Of course, if you've been taught Photoshop more than my students, then you'll know that you can use things like layer masks to make sure that you do this properly. But let's, I'm just going to keep it very simple. So once you've got the sky selected, you can hit delete and then you can deselect with control D or command D and then do your eraser tool, which is E on the keyboard. And you can use the square brackets to change the size of your brush up to the right. It doesn't matter if your brush has hard or soft edges here. What is important is that you just click over the line that's remaining there. Let's put some stars into the sky now. So in your downloads, there's something called space for you to drag into here like this. You're going to need to scale this image up. So if you hold alt on the keyboard, it will resize from the center, which is useful. If for some reason you can't see the cross in the middle of these stars and you don't know how to resize it, obviously just go to your move tool at the top and do make sure that show transform controls is ticked. 
so that you know how to resize it with the corner dots like that. Once you've resized it out to the edges, you're going to need to move it down underneath the mountains like this. In the one I made earlier, the mountains were almost silhouette in the distance. So let's create that effect. I'm going to move the horizon line down of the mountains so they're pretty much in the middle of the image. So get to your move tool, which is V on the keyboard and move it down vertically like this. If you hold shift on the keyboard while you're moving, it will allow you to move it in a perfectly straight line, which is nice. So keep them roughly in the middle like that. To darken the mountains, Mountains, the first thing you might want to try is to do control M on the keyboard. We'll bring up curves, that's M for mic, or go to image adjustments curves. And if you click in the middle of the grid like this, a dot will appear. Just drag that dot to the bottom right corner slowly. And as you do this, you'll see the image get darker. So now the dark colors of the mountains match the sky a bit better. Now hit OK. The next thing we're going to want to do is paint the floor to be almost totally black so that there's no detail under there. To do that, we can create a new layer, which I'm going to rename by double clicking on the text black floor and hit enter. I'm going to now on the keyboard, hold the control or command button and move your mouse over to the thumbnail of your mountains layer. When you hover over that, you'll see your cursor gains a dotted selection tool square. Click on that and you'll then see a selection loaded in there. This means that you can paint the shape of these mountains onto a different layer. I'm going to do B for brush. If it's the pencil tool, just click and hold and change it into a brush. It's probably a brush by default. And the brush I'll choose for this is a soft round brush that's in the general brushes folder. I'll have a size that's about 350 pixels. I'm going to make the color black and scribble like this at the bottom there. Now, if you want, you can have completely black mountains. This will look fine. But if you want to make your brush all the way up to about 800 in size, so you get a slight more of a fade like that. Next, let's add in our floor to do that drag in your 4k grid like this into Photoshop, hit enter on the keyboard. Make sure your 4k grid is above all of your other layers. If it's not, drag it to the top. Now you're going to need to create a color for this grid. So if you double click on the empty part of the gray area here, your layer style window will appear. If you're not very good at double clicking, then go to layer, layer style and choose blending options from in there. Now you want to choose down here where it says gradient overlay. Click on the word gradient overlay, not just the tick box, but the word. And in here, let's first of all change the gradient itself. You can choose from one of the options in here, um, but it might be easier just to click on the gradient bar like this and your gradient editor will appear. Uh, if your settings are at default, you'll only have two colors to start with and we can start with that. Let's choose the left color, which will be at the bottom of your grid and click on that color there. If you double click, it actually brings up your color picker window. If you can't double click very well though, at the bottom, you've got your color option here instead. Let's choose a dark desaturated blue. The hex code for this is 141758. You can hit OK. Next, let's choose the color on the right hand side. Double click on the color square there and you can have a similar color over there as well. The color code I have here is 1D1934. Next, we want to have a brighter blue in the middle. To add another color to the middle here, just click anywhere that's beneath this bar but isn't this diamond shape here. Here. another color will appear and then you can double click on this new shape that you've made by the way if you make a mistake and add too many of these you can just click and drag them off to take them away do not hit cancel you lose all your work double click on this one here and i'm going to make this quite a luminous shade of a greeny blue like this hit okay i'm then going to click just over here on the right hand side of the middle so that there's another one in the middle of the two i'll click to create another color here this color is going to be almost white so there's like an almost white sheen going through it the color Color codes, by the way, for the shades of blue were 5ED9E1. And the color code for the middle color here is AFE. A -E -E. And you get this kind of nice effect like that. Hit OK. And you can also hit OK on here now as well. Now we're going to need to add a glow to our image here. Now we want the glow to match the crazy colors that are going on here. The easiest way to do it is to simply duplicate your layer by clicking on your grid layer. Do Control J. There's now two of them on the top layer go to filter blur we want a gaussian blur on that increase the radius of the gaussian blur enough so that it looks like it's glowing an amount of between 5 and 10 will work well for your glowing layer to work properly you're now going to need to rasterize it by right clicking on the grid like this and go to rasterize layer 
So you still have the original grid that isn't rasterized, but the blur glowing grid is rasterized now. Then hold shift, select both of these layers and go to edit, transform perspective. Now zoom out quite far with alt and scroll and drag the bottom right hand corner out to the right like this, quite far. The further you drag it out, the more intense and awesome the perspective will look. Once you've done that, you'll need to drag the top down. And as you can see, it only lets you drag the top side to side. To drag the top down, you'll need to go to edit, transform, distort, and then drag the top down like this. Drag the top down so that somewhere beneath the bottom of the mountains where the floor is still almost black like this. And I'm just going to drag the bottom off screen there as well. If the sides have come out to the right like this, when you did that, then just drag them back in like this. When you're done, hit the tick at the top to commit the changes or enter on the keyboard. And you now have this effect. You're now going to want to fade away the grid at the top over here. One way of doing that is, of course, to go into your gradient and darken the color at the top like this by double clicking on the empty part of your layer. Go to gradient overlay, click on your gradient color and choose the color on the right here to be darker like that. Hit OK, hit OK, hit OK. And then on your 4K grid copy layer, you can go to your eraser tool. If you right click anywhere on the screen, once you're in your eraser tool, drag the hardness down to zero and make sure the mode is set to brush. And then you can make your brush about 250 pixels in size and just drag over the top like this. If you hold shift, it will allow you to drag in a nice straight line like that and then your grid will fade off into the distance. Next, we're gonna try and add this sort of glowing horizon line here, which you can keep on or turn off. This will introduce you to how we're gonna create quite a lot of the stuff with the lettering later on. To do that, simply get your rectangular selection tool and drag a very narrow rectangle along the horizon like this. You wanna keep this really quite narrow. You can edit it later on. So I'm keeping mine about double the width of one of these lines or something like that. Now go to a new layer at the bottom here with the plus button and let's rename the layer by double clicking on the layer and I'm going to call this one horizon line hit enter and you're going to want to fill the line pure white go to your paint bucket tool by hitting G on the keyboard and clicking and holding on the icon whatever you see here making sure you have the paint bucket tool then you can reset your colors with this icon here or swap them over like this with this icon here and then you can fill your rectangle white. By the way, if you wanted to move the rectangle before you fill it in, you can just be in your marquee selection tool here. And if you just use your keyboard arrows, you can indeed move this up or down accurately. So let's go back to the paint bucket tool, fill it in. And then when you're done, you're gonna to wanna to deselect with control D. Let's add a glow to this. This by the way, is the exact same way that you can make a lightsaber. So here's how you make a lightsaber. Double click on your empty area by the horizon line layer. When you've opened up the layer styles, go into where it says outer glow. Now I'm gonna zoom in with alt and scroll so I can see what's going on here. And I'm gonna to want to click first of all on the color so that I can see what's going on. Click on the white box here and let's choose quite a deep pink color. And so the color code I've got for this is CF51EE. I'm actually gonna copy that with control C because I need it later for the inner glow. Hit OK. Okay, let's go and make the opacity 100% for this. Leave the blending mode on screen. Noise is awesome. I'll show you that in a minute. But increase the spread to one or two pixels. That just tells you how far the glow will travel out before it then blends. So I'm going to do about uh, one or two for that. And then increase the size until you're happy. Now I'm going to have a size of about 32 pixels for mine. And once you can see that, you might want to go and have a look at the noise here. Increasing the noise gives you this lovely grain effect. Keep mine usually at about 5% here or less. Hit inner glow, which is just up here. And on the inner glow, you need to click on the color first of all, and just paste with the control V the code that you had from earlier like this CF51EE is what I'm using hit OK now go and change the opacity to a hundred percent for this and you're gonna to need to set the blend mode to normal the default is screen which you wouldn't mean you can't see anything setting the blend mode to normal would mean you can see your color now go down to where it says choke and I'm gonna increase that to about five percent 
and you can edit the size. Now this will depend on the exact width of your rectangle because yours might not be the exact number of pixels that I have. Mine's about 10-ish pixels. So if I have a size that's smaller than 10, I can still see the white glow bar in the middle. If your number goes to be bigger than the number of pixels of that, then of course it will be completely hidden. So I wanna keep mine at about something like this. Again, I've set noise to about three to 5% and you can leave all of the other settings as default. Hit okay from the layer styles when you're done. And you've now got a nice glowing edge on your horizon like this. To fade this out, now we're gonna to want to add a fade to the sides of this horizon line. If I use a giant eraser for a second and try and erase it, you'll see that it kind of does a weird effect with the glow here. So the best thing to do is to rasterize the layer. Right click on your horizon line layer and go to rasterize layer style. This makes it a normal layer. And then go over to your eraser tool, which is E. I'm gonna make my eraser tool quite big. It's gonna be about a thousand pixels. The hardness set to zero and again, the mode set to brush. One other thing I'll do with the eraser tool is set the opacity to about 30-ish percent like this. Then I can just click just off screen on the right one, two, three times and on the left one, two, three times. I know I could have adjusted the opacity, but it's best to keep your opacity lower so you have more control over what you're erasing. I've just clicked a couple more times on each side, slightly further in to where it's brightest in the middle like that. You've now created the entire environment for your text to go in. Now in the next and final video, we can add the text.